Hello, it's nice to have you with us for this 9 p.m. edition of the English News Edition. Uh, coming up. The President of the Republic condemns the terrorist attack of Mogadishu. International News Preparatory Meeting for the First International Trade Fair. Good evening. The President of the Republic, His Excellency Ismailo Mergeli, on Sunday condemned the terrorist attack of yesterday, Saturday, against a busy throughout in the Somali capital of Mogadishu, which caused the deaths of hundreds of people. In his condemnation, President Gheli described the perpetrators of this attack as evil agents determined to keep Somalia in chaos and abyss. Although a disastrous project consists in taking power by force and extending an illegitimate authority over a population that rejects its confidence in the head of state, the Somali sister nation and the entire international community uh, would forever refuse to undergo the dictates of this outlaw state. His Excellency Ismail Mugheli, forming the vow of rapid prosperity and fulfillment to the people, brother, friend, and neighbor of Somalia. Uh, the people and the government of Djibouti join me in expressing their solidarity and compassion to the Somali people in this state. He went on to express his uh, most sad uh, condolences to the families victims of the terrorist attack that took place yesterday in Mukadisho. The Minister of National Education and Vocational Training, Mr. Mustafa Mohammed Mahmoud, received today in his office the new director of the Turkish International Cooperation Agency, Taika, Mr. Mahmoud Taha Dogen. The minister wished the new boss of Taika on his behalf and on behalf of the government a welcome to the Republic of Djibouti. He also took the opportunity to thank the Turkish government for all its support for the country. The director of Taika has made a commitment to continue his organization's cooperation with MENFOP. It should be recalled that the Turkish Cooperation Agency is involved in several projects to strengthen the education system. These include projects to improve the infrastructure and equipment of technical education in vocational training and especially the development of the hospitality and tourism industry. An advocacy of the head of state for the integration of people with disability for sustainable development and seems to be emerging. The time was yesterday where the Djibouti Federation of Disabled People to be heard and show what they are capable of to advocate the question of citizenship to live together that goes through learning together. It is in this perspective that yesterday in the afternoon under the ashes of the Secretary of State for Youth and Sports, the Djibouti Federation for Handy Sports uh, organized the first edition of the National Day of Handy Sports, a first in the history of the great uh, Djibouti athletics family. This day is part of the policy of the head of state for social integration and participation in a model of equitable society where special people with special needs will be given the same opportunity as the others. A beautiful and notable and noble uh, initiative that has piqued the interest and the enthusiasm of all the people living with, this, with physical and mental disabilities. It was in front of an audience, moved and covered so with enthusiasm that several athletes uh, uh, disciplines uh, inscribed on the agenda were launched. This includes 100 meters lap races, 100 meters women's wheelchair race, 100 meters of mid run, and 100 meters women's wheelchair race, 200 meters of man death race as well. Looking forward even for your participation today. And I believe this is the, being the first time we'll be able to have more and more of this. And I'm looking forward. I personally to support the team and also to produce champions in, here in Djibouti and uh, with, the, with, the, uh, with the help of your office we'll be able to have champions maybe in the 2020 Japan Tokyo uh and thereafter, they have proceeded to the handing over of trophies and awards to the happy winners of this sports discipline, uh, where the president of the Djibouti Federation of Handicap, Mr. Ali Mohammed, was convinced the idea of having a policy of social integration for people with disability is not without a major challenge. Support them and give them an attentive ear in order to uh, manage and integrate the of these people with special needs, he said. The ceremony was attended by the Secretary of State for, social, for Youth and Sports. The Secretary of State for Social Affairs, the President of the Youth Federation of Handy Sports, and a Kenyan athlete with an Olympic medal in the crowd show their love and compassion for these people.
The Secretary of State for Social Affairs has congratulated the President of the Handicap Federation for this great initiative, which in its first edition offers this opportunity to showcase the capacity of the disabled to mount what they are capable of. And to close it, it is not easy not to mention the famous statement of the head of state in favor of the people with special needs. He said, it is often said societies not always welcome people with disabilities. They are often marginalized, exploited, and their rights are not expected. But from now on, this unfortunate thought must be banned from our minds, she concluded. And in his speech on the occasion of this unique event, the Secretary of State of Youth for Youth and Sports welcomed the perfect organization of this first edition of the National Day dedicated to the promotion of the handicapped uh, people with special needs are our brothers, sisters, and our parents. This promotion of the disabled person who is gathering us today is part of a political vision of the head of state, he said, for inclusive development and unifying society project that fosters unity in solidarity. With a view to celebrating its 110th anniversary and continuing in commemoration of the 40th anniversary of the independence of the country, the Djibouti Chamber of Commerce will organize the first international trade fair of Djibouti from 3 to 7 December 2017 in the Palace of the People. The Djibouti Chamber of Commerce has been the representative institution of the private sector for more than 100 years and this fair is part of the promotion of Djibouti companies in the National Commercial Center. This event is intended uh, uh, to bring together suppliers, customers and service providers from Djibouti in its sub-region and all their partners around the world. Uh, to this end, a major meeting was held this morning for all the major merchants of the place, public and private, as well as foreign merchants resident in Djibouti in the conference room of the Djibouti Chamber of Commerce. This meeting was chaired by the President of the Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Yusuf Musandwali, in the International Trade Fair, which will be held for the first time in Djibouti aims to place the spotlight on the production of goods and services traded and the know-how of Djibouti companies in the region and all the partners of the countries. This fair uh, will be okay, the occasion to uh, bring together all these economic operators eager to trade or invest in Djibouti and the continent and to bring them closer in order to conclude fruitful partnerships. The Women's and Family Ministry, in collaboration with UNFD and the support of the African Union, organized the International Day of Rural Women in Lakasa, Oboka. The ceremony was chaired by the General Secretary of the Ministry of Women and the Family, Mrs. Yasmin Salim Said, and was attended by a representative of the UNFD, local authorities, the Vice President of the Regional Council, representative of the various ministerial departments such as decentralization and social affairs. The day was also an opportunity to discuss with the local population the various actions carried out by the ministry, notably a mutual poultry farming, uh, literacy, uh, daycare centers, and as well, but also access to basic uh, social uh, services. First held on 15 October 28, uh, 28 uh, by the UN, the International Day of Rural Women is an opportunity to highlight the constraints faced by the rural women who are victims of uh, uh, vicaries of uh, nature, poverty and the conditions of precarious living in rural areas. The day was the occasion to give support in agricultural materials to 30 families of Lakasa. Uh, this uh, grant uh, should uh, make it possible to reinforce and equip rural women already engaged in agricultural activity, but also for women who wish to engage in this field and in its line with the ministry's will to empower women, reduce their vulnerability uh, by improving their lives and those of their children. As well, the Ministry of Women and Family, in collaboration with UNFD and the support of the African Union, organized in Galena, in the area of Idaita of the region of Tijora, in Tijora Region International Day of Rural Women. The ceremony was chaired by Mr. Hassan Ali Rubani, technical advisor to the Ministry of Women and Family, and was attended by representatives of the UNFD, the local authorities, the sub prefecture, 
of the region, and Mr. Mohamed Adoum, the Vice uh, President of the Regional Council, Abdul Omar, the representative of the various ministerial departments, such as decentralization, social affairs, and health. Uh, the day was the occasion to bring uh, support and materials and kits of water storage to 30 families of Galena. And this grant should make it possible to reinforce and equip rural women already engaged in agricultural activity, but also for those who wish to engage in this field. In continuing the still the fight against illegal immigration, on the now 14 to 15 October, the gender arms stations at the Asal Lake Asal station on once again catered a, a sweep operation in the hills of Leita and Amutabiso. Uh, during uh, the operation, uh, the uh, gender arms arrested 110 illegal immigrants, including seven women of Ethiopian uh, origin who all wish to visit the Gulf of uh, countries. And, and these uh, migrants received humanitarian assistance and water and food by the gendarmes and at the end they were returned on October 15 to the border of Galilee with the rolling means of the gendarmes. Following the death of uh, the former minister Ibrahim Idris, your leader of high personalities have sent messages of condolences to the family of the deceased. Very touched by the disappearance of the late Ibrahim Idris, uh, Prime Minister Abdul Qadir Kabil Mohammed addresses his most saddened condolences to the family and loved ones of the deceased Ibrahim Idris Jibril. And for his part from Moscow, uh, where he is on mission, the president of the LCMPD, Mohammed Ali Mohammed, and the former Prime Minister, Mr. Mr. Dileta, Mohammed Dileta, as well as the President of the Constitutional Council, Mr. Abdi Ibrahim Absie, the Ambassadors of Djibouti in Germany and Moscow, Mr. Aden Mohammed Dileta and Dr. Mohammed Ali Kamil, extended their condolences to the family of the deceased Ibrahim Idris and they pray the good God to welcome him to his internal uh, paradise. And moving on to the international scene now, leaders of uh, Iraq's Kurdistan region have renewed their negotiations offered to Baghdad but said they will not cancel the outcome of an independence vote. Kurdish officials are also snapped military threats over Kirkuk, uh, meeting between Iraqi President Fuad Mosum and his Kurdish counterpart Masoud Barzani was held in Sulaymaniyah after a deadline set by the Iraqi government for Peshmerga fighters to surrender expired on Sunday, Iraqi media reported. After the meeting with Iraqi officials on Sunday, Prezani said his government had rejected Baghdad's demand to cancel outcome of independence vote and pledged to defend the autonomous uh, region in case of an attack. Kurdish leaders, however, renewed their offer to resolve the crisis peacefully with Baghdad, Prezani's aid human said on Twitter. That's all for this news. Thank you for joining us in RTD and have a great evening.